right, so now we're going to be talking about confidence intervals and the basics of inference. Oh, this might be a little loud. And hypothesis testing here. So we need to talk about, before we get going too far, this concept of the sampling distribution of the mean. So that's what I'm going to be talking about here for the next little while, the sampling distribution of the mean for this lecture. It's really extremely important that you are able to understand this, not that you can just go through the motions, but that you do the the work of thinking carefully about this stuff until you understand what the sampling distribution of the mean is. We went over this in class uh, on the first day of this module, but this is a little bit more in-depth treatment of those things. So here we go. Um, just to review what we know about samples and populations is... This is problematic. Hello? Okay, about samples and populations. A sample is just some of the observations available from some larger potential group of observations. And from a sample, when we calculate some numbers like a mean or a median or standard deviation or something like that, then those numbers are called statistics, just as a terminology issue. And from a population, we have all the possible observations. Most of the time, populations are so gigantic that we're never going to know um, they we're never going to have access to everything that's in that we're going to have anything like the entire population. But sometimes we get lucky and there's kind of a gigantic pop or a, a smallish pop that we can have access to. And in those situations we get a little excited, but most of the time we don't know. When you calculate numbers from a population, those numbers are called parameters another terminology issue. If you have a population mean, it's a population parameter. If you have a sample mean, it's a sample statistic. Just to make things confusing, statistics means like 12 things, depending on what you're talking about. You've got to use context. Inferential statistics is the process of estimating what's in the population from what's in the sample. So we use sample statistics to estimate population parameters. And sometimes that's simple. Our best guess is just that whatever the population parameter is, is exactly the same as what our sample statistic is. That's the simplest case scenario. But sometimes, as we'll see, it gets a little more complicated, and often we want to know more than just what's our estimate of the parameter. The reason we need to know more than just the, what's our estimate of the parameter, so what's our best guess for the mean, is because of sampling variation. A lot of this assumes random sampling. A sample is not the same as the population, and we hope samples are fairly representative of the population, but we know that technically they're probably not. And in fact, they might be crazy, way different, totally not representative of the population. That's always a possibility. And the difference between what's going on in the sample and what's going on in the population is just what we call sampling error or sampling variation, as long as our sampling has been random. So here's some examples of how this might work. Uh, I used R to create a population here. It has I don't know, like 10,000 observations in it or something. So there are a lot of observations here, and, it, and it's a more or less uniform distribution. It's pretty close to uniform. Well, here's one sample that I randomly drew, a sample size of n equals 30. Here's a histogram of this sample. I drew a different sample, and it looks like this. I drew a different sample, it looks like this. You can see that these samples are not the same. They'll have different means, they'll have different standard deviations, they'll have different medians and IQRs. Everything about them will be different from the population. Here's another sample. Here's a final sample. So the point is that all those samples are different. And in fact, looking at these samples, we might not even know that we're looking at a uniform distribution. I mean, if we look at this sample right here, we might think we're looking at a positively skewed distribution. If we look at this one, we might think it comes from a negatively skewed population. But in fact, it's just because of random. Random does this. Anything can happen with random, and anything will happen with random if you keep doing it over and over again enough times. So here's another population, a very strongly positively skewed population, and here are some samples from that. Here, this one, the skew is pretty apparent. This one, not so much. You might think you're dealing with a kind of a normal distribution here, right? Because it, it's kind of pointy in the middle and slides off on the edges. Again, it's a sample size of 30, and you're starting to see, I hope, that 30 is big enough for some purposes, but it's not as big as we might hope. It doesn't necessarily replicate the population. Here we go. That, that positive skew is clearly shown, but here, not so much. You might even think it was a negatively skewed uh, population if you looked at this sample. And here's another one that looks a little bit like the population. And now here's a normally distributed population. Um, it's random value, so it's not perfectly normally distributed, but there it is. 
there's that population and here's a sample from that these don't look much different to me from the from the uniform samples the samples from the uniform distribution so the point of this little exercise here oh that's nice that's looking a little more normal the point of this exercise is to show you that you can't really know what's in the population from the sample the bigger the sample is the more likely you are to know but you're never guaranteed because random means random random means anything can happen so basically we don't know what's happening in the population but we wish we did and this is the whole point of inferential statistics descriptive statistics are nice but we really wish we had descriptive statistics about the entire population right we we really wish we knew the mean and the standard deviation of the entire population not just the mean and standard deviation of uh, a little piece of the population and so we try to guess and the process of trying to guess exactly what a specific parameter is whether that parameter is a mean or a standard deviation or something by using a sample statistic so trying to guess population values by using sample values is called point estimation just a general term for what we do and the easiest possibility is just this sample statistics are estimates of population parameters if you've got nothing else and if you have no other information to go on then your best guess is that just whatever you have in your sample is what you have in the population now you know you're wrong but what else do you have to go on you've got nothing if all you've got is one sample then your best bet is to just assume that everything in that sample is exactly what it is in your population so I think this might have gotten a little quieter which might be an okay thing I'm trying to adjust my volume as I go along here so the process of point estimation is pretty simple you just take a sample from a population you calculate a, st a statistic in that sample I had I've had more than one statistics professor who cannot say the word statistics one who always said statistics or statistics but he was an amazing statistician so just, there you go whatever that means so you calculate a statistic from that sample and that's it that's your estimate so if your sample statistic is 3, then you say my best guess for the population is 3. If my sample mean is 12, then my best guess is that the population mean is 12. That's all. So that's pretty simple, right? And this reminds us of this concept that being wrong is the next best thing to being right. And of course, this is just a snarky way of saying this. There's a lot more that goes into that. You want to be wrong using a pretty reasonable guess. So even though you know when you're wrong, you know you're not terribly wrong but this leads us to this big question knowing exactly what this point is is not the same as uh, knowing what you need to know so your best estimate is good but we need to know how good the estimate is so have you ever had a friend like your professor here who um, when you send them into another room and you say go find the the grated cheese in the cupboard or whatever uh, they come back and they say I didn't find it that's not very useful right just I didn't find it isn't very useful you need to know things like where did you look how much did you look did you look on all the shelves or just some of the shelves it's kind of like this just knowing that this is our estimate a single number isn't nearly as useful as it would be if we knew something of the range of possibilities of where things happened and this is how we apply this principle that when we're wrong we want to know how wrong we are now how much it matters it's a little bit separate issue but we want to know how wrong we are or at least estimate how wrong we are and that's what confidence intervals are all about so confidence intervals are all about estimating how wrong we are or how we might how wrong we might be in our point estimates point estimation is easy you just calculate the mean that's your point estimate but knowing how much you should trust that is a much more complex process and it's something that you can handle it's no no big deal we've worked our way up and if you've passed the exams and the quizzes up until now you'll be fine but it is a little bit more complicated than before and to do this we have to understand this concept of the sampling distribution of means something about sam or sometimes called the sampling distribution of the mean and this is what you should know about it you should know what it is what its properties are and what the mean and the standard deviation will be for the sampling distribution of means from a particular sample because we're going to say I have this sample what's the sampling distribution of the means that goes with this sample and what I mean when I say what's the sampling distribution of means is what's the shape of that sampling distribution hint it's mostly normal and what's the mean of that sampling distribution hint it's the same as the mean of your sample most of the time and what's the standard deviation of that sampling distribution hint it's a really easy formula to figure that out 
So the sampling distribution of the means is a population because we start with our, our population of raw scores and we take a sample of a particular size. Now we're always doing this when we've got a sample and so whatever the sample size is in our sample we're going to imagine the sampling distribution of means with the same sample size as that. So if we have a sample of 25 then we're going to imagine that we that we take a bunch of samples from the sampling distribution of means that also have a sample size of 25. Then we calculate a mean for that sample and we throw the sample back and we repeat that millions and millions and millions of times. And we collect all the means and that's the sampling distribution of the mean. So we can always imagine that sampling distribution that goes along with any particular sample that we might have collected. We have to make some assumptions along the way but we can imagine this. And we don't have to actually do the calculations, we just imagine what it would be like. And the beauty of mathematics tells us exactly what it would be like. So here's my graphic representation. You start with your sample mean and you think it came from some population. Now I say imaginary, it's probably a real population, but it's not accessible to us. And it's imaginary because we kind of assume that the population mean that our sample mean came from had the same mean as our sample mean. Why do we assume that? Because what else are we going to assume? If you have to assume anything about that mean, and you do have to assume something to make a sampling distribution, the only guess you have is your sample mean. So you use the only guess you have. You say the population mean that my sample came from has the same mean as my sample. You know you're wrong about this, but at least you know that you're making a guess that is probably a little on the crazy side. Um, but you're making it with your best in information possible. Then you imagine taking all these samples with the same sample size as your, as your individual sample down here. Your, your sample that you got has a certain sample size. All these samples, millions of them, all have the same sample size. And then you create a distribution of all of those. And it'll be pretty normal looking most of the time. And it'll have a certain mean. And it'll have a certain standard deviation. And you say, well, that mean's probably the same as my mean. And the mean of the means is the mean. So the mean of all these means here taken from a population that has this mean that was the same as this mean, the mean will be the same as this. So uh, at least for confidence intervals, the mean of the sampling distribution of the means is the same as our sample mean. It's the same as the mean we imagine for our population that our sample mean came from. The means are all the same. Same mean. The mean of the means is the mean. I don't know why I wiggled that. I was feeling saucy that day. Anyway, so here's some terminology. We're going to talk about the distribution of raw scores, and, or sometimes the distribution of x, the original distribution, uh, sigma sub x, mu sub x. Okay, this font makes it look like a u, but this font is silly. That's actually a mu. Some typeface person thought it was entertaining to make a mu look like a u. Anyway, so we're going to talk about those kinds of things. That, what that means is that distribution of all possible um, observations. So it means this thing here, the imaginary population. There is a real population, but it's our best estimate of what the population is. So I'm calling it imaginary, which might not be the best term. So we're going to talk about these things, and that means that that population, the population from which we, we are guessing our sample actually came from. And then we have the sampling distribution of means, and that's the normal curve on the previous slide. That's the distribution of all the means sometimes called the sampling distribution of the mean, or the distribution of means, etc. Now terminology, sometimes people say SDM or something like that. If they're talking about the mean of this distribution, sometimes they'll have mean sub x bar, or, or sorry, mu sub x bar, or mu sub SDM, or something like that. Uh, they usually try and tell you the difference, and it's important to know whether somebody's talking about raw scores or a distribution of means. This is pretty critical. Now, the standard deviation of that, of that distribution is called, it has a special name, it's called the standard error. So standard error is a standard deviation of a sampling distribution. And in fact, we shorten this standard error of the mean to just standard error all the time. Sometimes we say SE, sometimes we say SEM, and this is the terminology, sigma sub x bar, sigma sub S, SDM. So the mean of that sampling distribution of the means, it doesn't have a special name, it's just the mean of the sampling distribution of the means, which doesn't really roll off the tongue, but the standard deviation has a special name, standard error of the mean. So the sampling distribution of the mean, the shape, is always more normal than the original distribution, unless the original distribution was already normal, so that's like an exception, in which case it's just normal. You can't be more normal than normal, so 
in general, it's more normal than the original distribution was. And if the original distribution, the whole population distribution, because that's where this comes from, was perfectly normal, then the sampling distribution is perfectly normal also. Now, in almost all cases, it's going to be approximately normal. We'll talk about how to make it more normal. Uh, it becomes more normal as the sample size, and n in this case means the sample size of all those millions of little samples that were sampled, the means of which were taken to make up the sampling distribution of the means. So the sampling distribution of the means becomes more and more normal as those sample sizes get bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, if they get infinitely big, then it, had, then it makes no difference whatsoever what the original distribution was. The sampling distribution will be perfectly normal. But in fact, it tends to be normal enough as long as n is about 30 or more, and there's not a lot of skew in the original. So you don't have crazy amounts of skew. So you don't have skew of like two or more something like that. Um, and if you have a little too much skew in your, in your original distribution, and the only way you know about this is guessing from your sample, of course. So if you have too much skew in your sample, which makes you think you have too much skew in the population, well then just take a bigger sample. And then the sampling distribution of the means will probably be normal enough that our estimation is going to work. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use this normal curve z-score business on the sampling distribution of means instead of on the raw score distributions. That's what we've been leading up to this whole time. And so we're going to apply the normal model to the sampling distribution of means. And that's why we're not too concerned about whether things are truly normal in our sample or in our population, because if we have a good sized sample size, then, which is redundant, then we will have a pretty normal distribution of means. And that's what we're going to use the normal model with. So the mean of this distribution, sometimes we say mu sub SDM, mu sub X. Notice this X has no bar on it, so that means the mean of the population of all possible raw scores in our situation. And the standard deviation gets called all these different things, SEM, SE sub, sub M, SE, sigma sub SDM, or sigma sub X bar. If I use this terminology, which I do sometimes, sigma sub X bar. So the standard deviation of all of these means, not the standard deviation of the raw scores. This should have a, a, a bar over it, too. Sorry about that. A little mistake there. Now, how we figure out what the standard deviation is, we don't have to figure out much. You need to know three things about the sampling distribution of mean. You need to know its shape, you need to know its mean, and you need to know its standard deviation. Its shape is going to be pretty normal, and it will be normal as long as you don't have too much skew. And if you have a little extra skew, then at least a lot more than 30 sample. 30 observations in your sample, right? So normal is going to be the shape. And the mean is easy because the mean of the means is the mean. The mean of, oh no, this is okay without a bar. What's wrong with me? Uh, the mean of the sampling distribution of the means is the same as the mean of the original distribution. So it's the same. If your original distribution had a mean of 12, then your sampling distribution has a mean of 12, etc. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means, it has a special name. It's called the standard error or the standard error of the mean all these abbreviations here. And the formula to calculate is very easy. The standard error of the mean is just the original standard error, standard deviation of the original population divided by... This is wrong. All right, you need to know three things about the sampling distribution of the mean. You need to know its shape, its mean, and its standard deviation. The shape is normal. Uh, and in fact, it's not always perfectly normal, but it's usually pretty normal. Now, if the original distribution was, was already normal, then the sampling distribution of means is also normal. But even if the original distribution wasn't normal, the sampling distribution of means is probably pretty normal. And it becomes even more normal as the sample size, meaning the sample size of all those individual samples, each of which created one mean, and all those means made up the sampling distribution of means. So it's more and more normal as the sampling size of all those individual samples approaches infinity. So as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it gets more and more normal. And as a rule of thumb, it's usually normal enough if you have a sample size of about 30 or more, and there's not very much skew in your original distribution. That's usually fine. The mean of this distribution, so the mean of the sampling distribution of the means, is the same as the mean of the raw score distribution. So if the population has a mean of 12, 
then the mean of the sampling distribution has a mean of 12. Now our estimate of what the population mean is usually is our sample mean. So what this means is all the means are the same. So our sample mean has an, is 12, then we, our best estimate is that the population mean is 12. Therefore, our best estimate is that the mean of the sampling distribution of means is also 12. So all those means are going to be the same. And the mean of the means is the mean. The standard deviation of the means, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means has that special name, the standard error of the mean, has all these different ways that we can indicate it. There's a simple formula for this. The, stam the standard error of the mean, which is this here, the standard deviation of all the means, is equal to the standard deviation of the original raw scores, the whole population, divided by the square root of n. So it's pretty easy, you just need one thing, you just need n, sigma over square root of n. Now it's sigma sub x, meaning, well, that sub x doesn't even look like a sub, but it is. It's just saying this standard deviation of the raw scores. So th what you've thought of so far is just the standard deviation. Now we have to identify that it's of the raw scores. That divided by square root of n, that's the standard deviation of the distribution of means, which we call the standard error instead of a standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the distribution of all possible sample means obtained with random sampling with a specific sample size from a population with a specific mean and standard deviation. It's a theoretical distribution, so we don't usually calculate it. I mean, there are certain situations where you have access to the entire population, and then for some gen demonstration purposes, you could figure out all the values in the sampling distribution of means. But in general, we don't need to. We, we don't worry about that. Um, and usually, we don't have access to the whole population, so we can't worry about that. But through mathematics, we can specify its properties. What can it tell us? Probabilities. So it's a normal distribution and we're going to use that normal model to find probabilities in certain parts of the curve. So we're going to say things like what's the probability that we would randomly select a mean greater than 2.5? And I hope you can see that this has implications for p-values. But for right now we're going to use it a little bit differently. Later we will use this for p-values. This is exactly where we're going to get p-values is from the sampling distribution of means. But for right now, we're going to use the sampling distribution of means to calculate confidence intervals. So looking through here, this is how we, we would, one more time, how we would define the sampling distribution of means, or how we would imagine it. But we imagine it, excuse me, we imagine it very specifically. So here's some GRE scores. And let's say this is the population of all people who took the GRE in, I don't know, back when they scored like this, uh, 1995 or something. The standard deviation is 100. This is sometimes how I draw standard deviation in a distribution to let myself remember that that's what the standard deviation is. Because with a normal distribution, you need to know the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is 500, standard deviation is 100. That's how GRE scores work. Well, let's say we have a sample of 16 GRE scores, and so we want to know, and we have a mean from that, and we want to know what are all the possibilities for the sampling distribution of, uh, of means for n equals 16. It's going to be like that. Notice it's much, much skinnier because that's what happens. You can think of this a number of ways. You can just think of the improbability of getting multiple observations to have means at extreme values and how much more likely it is that the mean of a bunch of different values is always going to kind of cluster up in the middle. Or you can think of the formula, which is sigma over square root of n. You're always dividing by something to find out the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So no matter what's going on, this is the situation. You have a smaller standard deviation for the sampling distribution than you have for the original distribution. Now, we use this formula to figure out what this dis sampling dis or distribution standard deviation is going to be. So our original standard deviation is 100. Our sample size is 16. So every mean in this sampling distribution of means came from a sample that had 16 observations randomly sampled from, the, from this population here. So every mean and so we calculate that out, and the standard deviation of this new distribution, the sampling distribution of means, is much smaller than the original. Than the original. It's only 25. And this has implications for what happens with the z-scores. The probabilities get much more extreme because of this. So if you're carving up your uh, original distribution into z-scores, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and you say, you know, what's the probability of me getting a 600 or higher right? One standard deviation, deviation up, it's going to be about, what, 12, what's half of 34, like 17%, something like that. But the distribution of z-scores here, because this got skinnier, z-scores 
are about means and standard deviations. And the standard deviation is much smaller now. The standard deviation is only 25. Now the z-scores are like this. So now the probability of getting a 600 or higher is just insanely small. It's going to be some tiny, tiny fraction of 1%. Because very few means will fall out there. A lot of raw scores will fall there. But very few means from sample sizes of 16 will ever fall this far from the, the mean of the population. We're all done with this lecture. Um, this is enough to get you started thinking about the sampling distribution of the means, and we'll continue with many more lectures.